We're live. Woo. Oh, snap. Hey. Oh, oh, shit. Oh, God, my face is so close since I moved the camera. Yeah, mm -hmm. a little bit. Mm -hmm. It's all right. Yeah, I, I don't like it. <laughs> Welcome back, everybody. Maybe I'll move that back a little bit. The uh, Defenders of Kobold, Friday Night, The Hollow Throne, our fifth edition campaign here on the channel. Um, yeah, let's get into it. Who remembers what we did last time? Oh my uh, God. <laughs> we accidentally uh, were accomplices in destroying a city. Yeah. Yes. I uh, I totally missed the, the opportunity to say Volo didn't. He didn't remember. That's too far. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, let's see. You guys finished your previous job, delivered a cart full of uh Bombs, unknown probably. substances and then made your way up found the shadiest uh ferryman to get up there mm -hmm. uh, had as some, you do went yeah. to the, the seediest bar in town that ever existed yeah yeah <laughs> went and got in a bar it. fight that you guys rigged and then bet on once mm -hmm. again as you do yep um had a drinking competition that you guys did legitimately, but <laughs> yeah, we cheated a little bit. But did you? Uh, I think I gave him a reroll on one of his saves. Okay, yeah, you buffed him a little bit. I guess that's yeah. fair. You didn't do anything to <laughs> hinder other Mess people. With the... Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. So that was different. Um, went to a magic shop for a little bit. Found out that your dagger is not. Good to show people mm -hmm. There's something fucky about it. Um, and then the town started falling apart around you. Made your way off with the uh, the ferryman Gregor, I believe was his name. Yeah. yeah. Uh, also in there, the uh, the magic shop owner we showed the dagger to. Uh, he he called the guards on us too. Yeah. Yeah. He did. That guy. Yeah. Yeah. Snitches get stitches. They were uh, preoccupied with the city falling apart, luckily. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Which worked out for us. It did. Um, but yeah. So then you guys landed. Uh, the balloon got torn apart during the landing, but it's been since rebuilt and refashioned into a little steam cart, which is um, transporting you guys along the road out towards the X that's marked on your map. And. Uh, your only instructions are to take everything you find inside. We're good at that. Yep. Yeah. Absolutely, we are. We're good at taking things. Mm -hmm. There's a nap <laughs> line around. I think I got it. Maybe. So we'll pick up with you guys on the road in the steam cart. Uh, you've been traveling for a few days. And uh, you're getting pretty close to where the road will take you as far as as this X, um, there's not really a road or any major road that you guys know of that intersects with it. It seems to be off the path a little bit. So, um, you make it to a point where Gregor's not able to take his cart anymore. He's like, uh, oh, it's probably about a day or two from where we are. If you guys just walk, so I can wait here and whatever. I don't think this thing's too good at off-roading until I get the balloon repaired. That's fair. Yeah. Let's yeah, we uh, get to stepping. And so as you guys are leaving, he pulls the balloon out and starts patching away at it and has a bunch of like needles and threads and things to start repairing. And he just kind of goes into all that. Uh, but yeah, so there is a... Uh, it's another road sort of that leads off but it's not very well kept it's just kind of like a trail cut through brush and trees and things that snakes its way through the countryside and you expect it to be about uh a day or two on foot okay yeah All so right. i'll uh load my pack up on uh conrad number eight and i'm ready to go all right put him to work so yeah, let's head out uh, with this. Let's do some wilderness travel. 
right off the oh bat. Boy. That's always fun. Yes. So I'm going to ask for a, um, a stealth check, a perception check, and a survival check. Ooh. I have um, a plus three to perception. <laughs> I am it. good at none of those. I'm good at survival. I'll roll the stealth check. Because I, got a, I'm wearing I got a really high perception check. Does anybody else have? Armor. Nobody else has high perception? I have a plus one to perception. Okay, I'm taking perception. <laughs> <laughs> yes. And uh... worst case scenario, I suppose I can take, well, yeah, if nobody can take survival. I'm taking survival. I'm rolling that. You're rolling survival? Okay, I I'll have... take perception. I just need to look up what the disadvantage for scale mail is. I think it's any heavy armor. Boop, 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 boop. Okay. Boop, and scale mail boop, is medium. Boop, 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 boop. Cool. Boop, 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 All right. I was completely unwilling to take. Uh... Oh, no. I do have disadvantage on stealth. Yep. Oh, do you? Okay. Yep. Yeah. That's fine. I'm moving. okay with that. I can roll a disadvantage on my plus two stealth then, I suppose. Nope. Too late. <laughs> Oh, I rolled sleight of hand. Let me... It's the same <laughs> fucking modifier, so... Uh, yeah. Six for my stealth. All right. <laughs> um, let's get the uh, the navigation and the perception rolls in there. there. There's my perception roll. <laughs> oh, Jesus. <laughs> it's not for that plus seven. <laughs> and uh, survival. Who was doing the survival? I have zero in survival. <laughs> Can, can I roll more than one, Joe? I've got uh, no, one only in survival. One. I thought so. I thought it was yeah. one one per. One per. Theron, what do you have in survival? Let's see. If you don't have any ranks in it, it's just your wisdom. I have negative one in survival. <laughs> oh my Shit. god. There we go. Don't worry, guys. Like we are a bunch of city boys. boys. <laughs> Four, five, and six. We did we it. We have All right. no idea where we're going. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sure. We'll do a little, uh, you know. We're, we're probably the heading the wrong direction, the like entirely. Doing? It's fine. <laughs> let's so. let's set up camp. Do we have a tent? No. Let's use that rock. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> right. we did not go adventuring for this to be, you know, uneventful. Absolutely. Yeah. Um. So it's as you guys are kind of stumbling <clears throat> your way <throat> through this trail. There's a few times you lose it. And you're not really sure if you're on it or if this is just like natural terrain or if someone's carved it out. You don't feel like you're making great progress or as much as you'd hoped. Um, <laughs> you failed all three of them. That's hilarious. Uh, Damn it, Joe. Ooh. Give us <laughs> give us a buy on something. <laughs> uh we're it's made when... for cheating and stealing, not for surviving. Yeah, yeah. We're city criminals. <laughs> yeah. I think it was... Uh, we rigged Chuck our the one outside. This You're is the one every after-school uh, special right, where they... Chuck. Yes, I am the one doing the stealth check. So, stealth! I brought stealth! Connor with me too, so he's mm. rattling as well. Yeah. I'm sneaking. So it's. Uh, I'm imagining you just like playing his rib cage like a xylophone, out of boredom, but you know, a little bit stealthy. Uh, it's a little bit past uh, afternoon, maybe three, four, and you're uh, walking up ahead of the group, doing your scouting, and uh, you come around a uh, a bend around one of these hills, and you walk almost into this long line of zombies that are walking in single file <laughs> line. And uh, you don't seem to notice them no, before actually. they start turning towards you. Can we just like get in line with them and tap the shoulder in front of us? Like, hey, what are we queuing up for? Uh... <laughs> it turns around brains. Oh god! The way it's snaking, this it's like uh, think of like ants in a line, but it's zombies. Uh, I'll go ahead and call out to them. Hey, friends! 
All right. Uh, and I'll be like, Conrad, take your hood off so they know where, you know, we're cool. So Conrad takes his hood down. They're all just kind of marching, walking slowly. You don't really see where the either end of this is because it kind of snakes off into the trees on one side and snakes over the hill on the other. And uh, about five or six peel away from the middle, they kind of stop and turn to the side and start hobbling over towards you. A few of them have spears, uh, but most of them don't seem to have any weapons or anything. So there's two that are wielding spears, uh, one that's in armor but doesn't have any weapons, and uh, then two more that are just in rags. Uh, I'll call you. out in uh, Abyssal. Uh, hey, uh, who's your master? I'd like to introduce myself. They uh, don't seem to pay any attention to what you're saying. Start closing the gap on you. And uh, the two with spears start raising them and letting out moans and Seem to be uh, gnashing their not, teeth and things at you. Not much for communicating. Listen, listen here, Mr. Zombies. Clearly, we're, you know, we're on the same team here. Like, look, this is my good friend Conrad, uh, and he is undead as well. They seem to be ignoring him, and they're just kind of like all pointed towards you. Oh my fucking gosh. God. Mr. Zombies is my favorite. Means of the yeah. How rude. <laughs> so they're not moving too quick. Uh, you feel like you'd be able to outrun them pretty easily. But uh, they seem to be converging on you. And also the line is not moving very quick either. So you, uh, you get the sense that if you keep standing where you are, more that are coming will start peeling off towards you as well. Yeah. Uh, for let's the moment, it's just these five. I never used my channel divinity before. Uh, as an action. Okay, cool. I'm just going to walk up to him. Okay. Uh, and I'm going to use my channel divinity. Going right. to turn undead. Uh, no, I am going to cast Destroy oh. Undead. Oh, yeah, that's I'm right. Going to signal for uh, Conrad to back up. Okay. So, and, every so how does the spell work? Uh, every undead uh, that I can see within 30 feet of me has to make a wisdom saving throw. Okay. Uh, and my save for that is a 15. Could be great. Could be great. Gonna get melted. All right. So you said within 30 feet? Yeah, so I would move up within 30 feet of these this group that peeled right. away and yeah. then pop it off. So all five of the ones that peeled away and then one more that's just starting to kind of enter towards... All instantly just get destroyed. They all uh, are they? What's their CR? Their CR? Yeah. Or did you have that picked? I didn't have that off the top. Okay. Of my head. If they're standard zombies, they're uh, it's fine then, as long as they're you know not something more powerful as far as zombies go. Oh no, they're okay. They none of them seem to have a lot of work put into them. Okay. And there's a lot of them, so you get the sense that whoever's been making them if they have been made it was going for quantity over quality yeah so no they're all just obliterated nice now there's like a sizable gap in the line okay uh now that they're gone i'm gonna go back to the group uh nothing over here <laughs> <laughs> Uh, this line you do believe kind of is perpendicular to the line or to the trail that you're on. Oh. And this line stretches for a long ways or? Yep. He didn't see the well, did... of it on either side. 
Oh, he didn't blow a hole in it. Let's shoot the gap. Yeah, I mean, we could shoot the gap. I didn't see a beginning or end of this. Um, I mean, we could camp out for, you know, a handful of hours and see if it passes. Or we could try and find another way to sneak past. I don't, hmm. They didn't really follow you, did they? Uh, Joe, did they follow me after I destroyed some of them? Uh, there were none that were close enough to really notice you after you did that. Okay. So, uh, it's, so no. It just seems like the ones that you took out just left a gap in this line and they continued slowly marching. It seems like we could probably just go through it and not bother. Yeah, yeah I, I mean, mean, if they didn't notice enough to follow you, I guess we could we could just blow right through it. Cool, let's do that then. Yeah, I, I see no problem with that plan. All right. <laughs> so, um, what are you guys doing then? What's the gonna move up along the the trail to the same place? I guess yeah. I imagine as you're all talking about it, you come back around the corner and you see just this line of zombies and you're kind of like on a hill where the hill goes up and there's not really much on it other than just rocks and things. And it goes down into more of a, a valley or a low part and there's more trees and things that way. So you can't really see either side of it. You just kind of see the line get lost in the trees and, you don't see the end of it as you look over the hill. Is our little gap still there? Um, or did it get you see a in? gap kind of like you, the Further it snakes down. in and out through the trees at this point. And you do see like, it's kind of weaving in and out. So you see like there's a gap, but it's pretty like far into the trees. Ah, uh, I don't have any cool spells that hurt a lot of people. <laughs> We could, like, if this is like a thing of ants, we get something to block their trail. Yeah. They pile up behind the block, and we can just sneak past on the other side of the block real quick. Or, like, or... we could get a giant sugar cube. <laughs> oh, oops. I did not mean to do that. <laughs> that may work. Uh, I was thinking more along the lines of knocking a tree over. Yeah. There are definitely plenty that you'd be able to uh, knock down. There's they're kind of walking through a forest forested area to the right off the lower side of the the uh, trail that you're on. Nice. Yeah, that sounds like a good idea. Oh, I guess I could try and use uh, shatter as well if we wanted to. What is um, is shatter? It's only against inorganic inorganic objects, right? Yeah, which could be used to uh, knock a tree down. Is tree inorganic? We could oh, have no, Conrad yeah. walk amongst them and then have him walk in a circle, and maybe they'll follow him in a circle. It's just that inorganic material has a uh, disadvantage. Is all. Okay. Then yeah. I, I don't care. I'm also, I think the Conrad walking in a circle idea is dumb enough to just work. Yeah, we could give it a try. Let's do that. And then if that fails, you get ready to knock a tree over to block their, their path. Okay. All right. I send Conrad out there. Okay. He slips into the, the marching order. Mm -hmm. They don't seem and to then... pay or they don't seem to like get star or anything as he walks into the order. Uh, and then they I have him kind of out a little bit. Yeah, to to make room. Mm -hmm. I have him uh, space. I have him then when there's a spot I can see, I'm going to have him kind of turn off the trail. Okay. And see if they follow. Okay. Um, give me a charisma check. You got it. Oh. So a flat charisma wow. test is a 21. Damn. Nice. All right. So he peels off and the crowd behind him 
start following the direction that he's walking. Nice. And he has All right. split the pack, starting at him. We've got our gap. Let's go. Zoom, 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 zoom. All right. So you guys are able to, you know, tell Conrad to move around in enough of a zigzag or something that it buys you time to slip on through. Uh, so what are you doing with Conrad? Like, do you want the chain to reconnect? Uh, I'm just going to have him connect them in a circle. And then I'm going to have him just try and slip out. Okay. Like, so just go in and in and in. He a starts bit and then like walking. <laughs> and how long are you going to leave him before you try and are you like, are you trying to find the end of this whole? No, train? no, just long enough that we can get through. Okay. So, you know, he only has to do like a, you know, 20 foot diameter circle, just enough so we can get okay. past without getting noticed. Uh, you know, I need to stay within, you know, uh, sight of him. So, okay. So he starts walking around in a circle and they're following him and he gets to where it starts turning in on itself and they start kind of bunching up and just kind of form this mob. And once that happens, they all kind of start bumping into each other a little bit. And then they look around and start it like fanning out. And it's while they're doing that, that Conrad breaks away and is able to join back up with you. But they seem to be very confused and don't know where to go. Good job. Awesome. Good job, Conrad. Perhaps we jacked someone's plans up. Maybe. Ah! Uh, it, all else fails. We have certainly alerted someone to our presence. It, it looks like a, that gif of the sheep that are like just circling, circling. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Very old gif. Something like that. Uh, but yeah, you make it through. Uh, you lose sight of the other end of the line. And you okay. just see more and more zombies coming over the hill bunching up in this mess and a few of them it's kind of like breaking off into their own paths and they're going the general direction that the other one was but they seem to be sort of lost and depending on how long they're supposed to be traveling that way they might totally miss where they're going so you feel like you've uh, definitely disrupted the flow <laughs> nice but onwards right. to the X Mm -hmm. so uh you travel for a little bit gets to be about night time uh, imagine you're uh, able to stop pretty much this entire way like to your um to the left of you as it goes north more uh, it gets a little bit more hilly and then to your right it's you're kind of like walking along the edge of a tree line so there's pretty uh, light forests but you can see if you were to like go clear right you would eventually hit some pretty dense forests that um, are you would know as like the giant forest that kind of separates Dunmanora from Renham and then um, to your left is all these hills that kind of make their way all the way up to the uh, the north part of this continent so uh, what are you guys doing for camp are you wanting to Stay more on the hillside. Stay right on the trail. Um, I feel like not on the trail is ideal, but... Yeah, on the trail, we'd have to worry about living people and dead people. <laughs> right. Off the trail, there's, there's a chance that we only have to deal with critters. Uh, yeah, but once again, I'm a city criminal, so let's stick to the trail, I think. At least that's okay. my vote. Mm. I am perfectly fine if you all want to, you know, I'll go with the group decision. Uh, Conrad votes with me, too. <laughs> <laughs> that is so shit that you get an automatic backup vote. <laughs> Hands up for my decision? Listen, at... <laughs> Baron, you know, Volo could outrank me, uh, you know. Mm -hmm. I can bring some dead back, but there Volo, like he can real no, not Volo. 
Darren, what's your character's name? Tavi. Tavu. Mm -hmm. He can really bring some fucking dead back. Volo can get some dead people. Yeah, he just makes them. Yeah. Yeah. Volo will make dead. (laughs) Volo does not fear death. (laughs) Volo is death. (laughs) Good stuff. What are you guys doing for camp? Or basically just what type of spot are you choosing? Just a clearing, somewhere nice, gentle breeze. Perhaps uh, we could have a happy medium of just a little off the trail. Okay. Okay. I'll go with that. All right. Towards the forest or towards the hills? <sighs> Which has more cover? Uh, forest for sure. Hills like kind of has some cover. There's giant rocks every so often. But uh, like if you had a fire or something, it'd be pretty hard to hide. Forest it is, I think. That way we could still option to burn the forest down. Yes. Mm. Ah, yes, yes. All right. You guys peel away and go off you the trail know. a little bit. Set yeah. up your camp in the forest and through the night. Uh, let's see. I have some fancy gadgets, don't I? You do. Do you want to use any of them? Yeah, I think you could play uh, your theremin. Well, I was thinking about using my my doot doot bird mm-hmm. to watch us overnight. Oh right, my alarm. Where bird, the heck? Which... Where the heck? I, I I've had Disa in my pocket for forever since like the first session. I haven't which... I haven't let my bird out. Mm-hmm. Uh, I will. Uh, I'll go ahead and uh, use an action to. Uh, to bring uh, Disa back from uh, wherever her little Pokeball takes her and uh, <laughs> right. into non-existence, <laughs> back from non-existence and uh, just kind of let her hang out in the trees, just kind of do her own thing, um, keep an eye on us. Okay. Just so warn me if anything out. comes within. Yeah, exactly. Just kind of let me know if anything comes within, you know, eyesight for 100 feet or whatever. Okay. Imagine yes. you use your uh, crystal parrot the, to do the same the thing. Ruby parrot. Yeah. yeah. It's uh, again, Easy. it's this like red crystal parrot that kind of animates itself when you pull it out and use it. It kind of just looks like a jumble of stones that are like rotated in on themselves. But whenever you give it the command, the guard kind of animates and sits up and forms a parrot and just sits watch and whatever direction you tell it to. Yep. If it's like the the spell, it'll just watch like a, a space effectively. Yeah. So yep. I just have it keep an eye on the camp. Okay. You do so. Uh, night passes. Nothing eventful happens. Uh, you hear just some random sounds in the night. It's, uh, you know, nothing out of the ordinary for a forest. A few animals here and there. Um, but a little bit more dead than you would uh, expect because there's a lot of uh, a lot of disruptions in the area with all the undead but uh, nothing comes across your camp you don't get alarmed your bird doesn't run into anything it sees a few like foxes and things running through but nothing to be worried about yep as long as they don't come to nibble our bums mm-hmm. uh, then we're okay <laughs> so uh, you guys start up and uh you know that you'll reach the uh, X today. You travel on. Uh, it's a pretty uneventful day until about, um, say, about 5 o'clock in the afternoon. And you are getting pretty close to where this X is marked out to be. And as you come over a hill, you see there's kind of this forested area with a bunch of uh, old overgrown buildings that are built out of stone. There's like moss and vines and things that have kind of come up over them. Um, It's to be like the type of thing you'd see like Aztec or that type of ruins or whatever. But uh, it's not totally overrun. There's a lot of like plant life and stuff, but you can see it's kind of been cleared. Like there's where there's pathways and stuff. They seem to be... um, maintained almost 
And you see um, some like banners and things actually hung. Uh, there's a few like posts with some flags put up on it. And you see a few lights from inside of uh, some of these stone buildings. But you don't see any people. And this is like as you're coming over a hill, so it's kind of a distance. But this seems to be the area with the X on it. Well, let's get to Robin, I guess. It's, yeah, I suppose. Yeah, okay. All right. So uh, as you guys come down, uh, is anyone doing anything in particular coming into this area? Uh, I do want to, uh, for what's worth, make sure I collected up my parrot. Yeah, as in you did. Yep. I, I forgot mm. for a moment that it could stay there for a very long time. Yeah, you can have it deployed forever. <laughs> Pretty yeah, much. and I, I don't want that. I want to do a history check on the runes. Okay. Uh, roll it for me. Nice. Dirty 20. All right. Um, so these ruins are not too uncommon. There was uh, several civilizations that have lived and died out over the course of the, uh, the history on this continent. And uh, these appear to be about not in the last age before the one you are, but the one before. Um, typically... There's no one left from it or anything. So uh, it's a little bit strange to see that there's some upkeep on it. Um, but you don't expect it's people that built these buildings that are living here. It's most likely someone that's kind of moved Inherited. in. Yeah. I'll move in, yeah. Yeah. Okay. This one doesn't look like one of the major... You don't see any um, any monuments or anything that uh, matches the really common um, civilizations of the area. So whatever this is, is uh, either pretty small or just one that you're not sure of off the top of your head, but you can still tell it's from that era. But you don't see any, like, there's no giant statues or anything. It's pretty just like a, almost like a normal looking town. So... The big X. The, we're we're at the big X, right? Yep. Mm, and we're supposed to. What were the instructions specifically? So you had a dagger with a gem on it, and then the instruction said, "Take everything that's inside." Get to loot. I'm curious if they. You're again. I well, we don't know what the dagger does, right? Yeah. Nope. We can have the okay. unseen servant uh, interact with it if we need. I well, there was all you know I, is that it's shady. Right. Yeah. Yeah, I was remembering things from a past life, uh, but mm -hmm. those aren't appropriate things for now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um. Yeah. Let's go. Uh, look for a. Thing with I don't know. stuff in it? Some building that looks like it's <laughs> worth stealing shit. <laughs> okay. The most steel-worthy building. Yeah. So, uh, as you guys are coming into this town, it's almost uh, towards sunset. And you're coming on the opposite end. So, like, the sun is on the other side of this. You're, like, staring at it almost. And, uh, as you walk through, you see it's just kind of a town. There's a few random houses and things laid out. As you're walking by, they all seem to be really plain. Uh, but they there's signs that there's people living in them. You see like wooden tables and chairs and things and some beds that are made up. But you don't see any people as you're walking through. Mm. Um, and so you start going through. You don't see anything valuable either. Like you don't. It just seems like really kind of primitive lifestyle. Um, 
And as you guys are walking through towards kind of the edge of the town, uh, you see there's like this big open uh, area and there's a whole bunch of people wearing just kind of plain clothing, some in robes, some in just tattered rags and stuff. And they're all kneeling down facing towards the sun. Is there like a large X in the sky or on the ground that we can see? Uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> it was worth a look. <laughs> There's no location discovered <laughs> over your head. No, no big way marker. You know. Go, no. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> okay. We, we definitely estimating. It looks to be about twenty-five to thirty-ish people, Fuck. and all ranging different ages you see a few kids some people in their, like the most seem to be either between their 20s and 40s um and then but there's some pretty old people in the crowd too but, uh, just uh, maybe by spread. take everything inside they meant that literally i mean we we do have essentially three people with some borderline slash full-blown necromancy i I mean, 20, 30 people is... That would be beyond my scope. Yeah. Most of my fancy stuff. Is like well, it also... Movies. So it said take everything inside and deliver what you find to uh, Sioux Falls, I think is what you guys named okay. it. <laughs> Sioux Falls. So yeah. it's... Sioux Falls, Dakota. You kind of <laughs> expect that it would be something like more material that you can transport right that you're looking so, for you didn't but we don't see like... we don't see a, a building that's just screaming steal my shit though do we uh as you're walking through um just walking through this town you don't really see anything that stands out to you uh, who's got their beep on i don't know go to go to the settings cog and uncheck enable background chat beep. The uh, the only thing I guess just me. walking through the only thing that would stand out to you is that there is one stone building that doesn't have like a hollow living space inside of it. It's just like okay, that's our first stone. target. Yeah, on all sides. Yeah, let's check out the hollow stone building and start. Yeah breaking the floor. I may go ahead and uh, disguise myself real quick to try and uh, look kind of like the, the villagers here. Okay. Um, they don't seem to be wearing anything. They just are wearing clothes that you can tell they put together just from stuff in the area. Like They seem to be living pretty primitively. And no one's really taking notice to you. Uh, you hear that they're doing some sort of like chant. They're in like almost a prayer or something. There's a few elders like at the front of this group um, I'll, I'll try it maybe back, but they don't seem to notice do we understand the chant um uh, what languages do you know uh not very many but i can always cast tongues let me see if i have that on my sheet gosh where is that It's been a minute since I've had to look for this in D and D Beyond, where my languages are. Gosh, where on earth is that? Oh, abyssal, common, elvish, and halfling. What are we doing? Uh, it's none of those. Okay. I find out what the peeps are chanting. Um, I may go ahead and let me double check what tongues does. I might just go ahead and cast it so I can get an idea what they do been and while you do that I will actually be right back yeah I, I will uh, I will use tongues on myself okay uh, so you use tongues and um I don't think it tells you what language you hear, but you're just able to understand no. it. Yeah, you um, just I can communicate with them, and not, they can communicate with me. So okay, so as soon as you cast it, you start 
kind of chiming in. And it seems like they're just kind of reciting through um, some prayers and things, um, asking for forgiveness at one part, asking for guidance, asking for protection. And they keep mentioning the great, uh, what did I write? The great round flame. Would I be able to make a religion check to see if I know what that's about? Sure. Oh, look at that. That never happens. Oh, 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 oh. All right. So uh, you're Good not... job. Yeah. <laughs> that's solid there. You are now a priest in whatever religion it is. <laughs> yes! I've made, I've made the religion. You are... Uh... You don't know of a religion that is specifically worshiping the great round flame, but through your tongues and just listening, they're pretty blatantly talking about the sun, and it just seems like they're worshiping that. Okay. They're, they're not expecting to, to die because of it or something, though. Yeah, no. it Praise like the some, sun. Some real George Carlin shit. A little bit. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, they're asking for protection. They're, uh, it's kind of towards the end of the day, and the sun's about to go over. It's like getting towards where it would be night soon, and this seems to be their prayer ritual that they do before the sun goes down for the night. Okay. Well, I, I will uh, keep an ear out, and we can proceed with our attempted thievery, I think. Okay. So you guys are interested in this uh, one building that seems kind of different than the rest in the town. Because the rest are just kind of like square. And either one or two sides of them are open in some way that you're able to walk inside. And you see kind of primitive living spaces within it. Uh, but this one doesn't have an opening on, it, on any of the sides. It's just kind of closed. Uh, and it's also very overgrown. Most of the other ones have like the the moss or whatever is growing on it kind of cleared away. Um, especially on the sides that you'd be walking through. Uh, but this one's almost completely covered in just plants and vines and things. It doesn't seem like anyone ever really does anything with this one. So. But uh, there's no way in? Not that you don't see any openings on it. Just walking around it. Yes, uh, if nobody has any objections, Volo will take his sword and start chopping through some some stuff to try to find an opening. All right. Are you trying yes! to Yes. Who's <laughs> yelling? What was that? <laughs> That's Arnold Schwarzenegger yelling. He's excited oh, okay. about Volo. Okay. <laughs> it's very loud. Yes, it is. <laughs> um But yeah, are you trying to do this quietly or anything or are you just hacking away there's no point to being stealthy with volo okay i don't think so <laughs> but uh yeah actually start... no, he's not going to use his sword he will use one of his two hand axes okay yeah you start doing so you start chipping away at uh all of these vines and things you're going around and um let's see oh all right I was going to roll a d4 to see which side you start on. <laughs> so you clear away, and um, this wall seems to have a lot of markings and kind of carvings all over it. And uh, it's almost like a cube, this whole building that's kind of sticking up. And um, on the wall that you start clearing away, you notice that there is a large circle it's kind of carved into the stone and in the center of it there's a small like divot that goes in a little bit hmm and then you uh, see the outline so you also notice that the entire like face of this wall seems to have an outline around it hmm? sort of door shaped like you get the Does it sense that there's some way to get this to open is it a divot like that you might stick a, a dagger into? Um, it's a or little does bit it seem like it's than shaped that. for okay. So it's a divot that um, it's not like a hole. Like it, it doesn't look like a key or anything goes into it. Mm -hmm. It's like a divot that maybe a rock or something would go into. Something pretty small. 
about that hmm. size. Well, maybe the other end of the dagger could fit into it. Give it a shot. Oh, perhaps, perhaps. Yeah, I'll pull out the dagger and I'll put the the thing that the crow's foot is holding into it. Okay. So uh, you pull out the dagger and it does have this gem at the bottom, and uh, you go to. Crimson gem of Sidorak. And it, you go to kind of slot it into the door. Are you pulling the gem out of the dagger or just trying to slot it with the dagger? With the dagger in it, just. Okay. So you kind of push the end of the dagger into it. And uh, it doesn't really fit very well, but you see kind of the way this divot's carved out. It seems to line up with the uh, the way the gem's cut on the end of this dagger. Hmm. Oh, well, that's convenient. Uh, so perhaps if the gem was removed from the dagger temporarily, it would fit better? Yeah. You get the sense mm. of that. Volo will remove the gem, and he'll start making for the crow's foot of the dagger to try and pull it. If anybody okay. would like to stop him, now's a good time. <laughs> no, absolutely Wait! not. <laughs> Wait, so, okay, ah! time out. Time out, time out, time out, time out. Give the dagger to Conrad. Okay. Ah, there you go. And then have Conrad, like, Conrad, pull the gem out, that motherfucker. And then we'll make Conrad do it. Okay. So you hand it to him. And he just start he like grabs under the gem and starts pulling on it. It doesn't seem like it's coming out in any way. He pulls on it for a bit. And uh after a bit of just kind of forcing on it, he seems lost and how to open it. Hmm. Yeah, uh he tried. It's it's a lost cause. What's next? Uh, perhaps a real person tries to take it out. Ah, Volo mm. has a crowbar. <laughs> of course, that could break the gem. That would be bad. Does anyone want to inspect it? Why would we oh, do that? Why perhaps, would we yes, do that? We could look at it instead of just beating it. <sighs> Uh, would like it, an arcana check be useful? Uh, sure, I'll give an arcana perception investigation, like... perhaps? That too. That works with uh... Because I have a minus one in investigation. There you go. I'll, I'll, I'll roll my arcana real quick. It's 12. Okay. Um, with your 12, uh, you would know that Sometimes daggers that are fitted this way uh, will have some sort of mechanism in them if they're like meant to have gems pop in and out of them. Like you would give it like a little twist or something and it'll mm -hmm. go. Weep. There's usually a trick to opening these. Well, and... I can futz around with it, I suppose. All right. Uh, with you knowing that, you're able to kind of futz around with it for a while. And you find that kind of the opposing claw on it with mm -hmm. uh, enough force kind of clicks and it pulls away and you're able to just remove the gem. Nice. I will go and poke it into yonder door. All right. So you go and you slot it in. And uh, when you do so, there's like a little bit of a light on the inside of this gem that flashes and then flickers out for a little bit and nothing happens. Hmm. Does it need more energons? Volo Maybe. will boot the round circle with his foot. I do believe Well, I, I don't know. I, I, I shouldn't say anything because I think I'm speaking with out of game knowledge here. Mm -hmm. If you feel inspired by what you think is happening, you can attempt another like check on trying to figure out what's going on. Okay. I mean, seeing it light up and go dim, uh, what would you like to see for that? Would that be a, still Arcana since it's magical or? Sure. Okay. Uh, there we go. A dirty 20. All so, right. Uh, 
So the twenty plus six. Um, you uh, you're thinking about this, and um, you didn't really notice it before, but with the way that the gem slots out and kind of the imagery that you're getting from this, uh, this appears to be a dagger that's meant for soul stealing. And the gem is a soul gem. Mm-hmm. And you would also know that this is an extremely taboo practice and is highly frowned upon. It's probably why the guy in the shop was very unhappy when you had it. Yeah. Uh, soul stuff is very powerful, very effective. Uh, it functions kind of the way that it does in many other forms of media where you're able to get a soul and bind it to an object to make it pretty powerful. But uh, it's very taboo because it destroys the life and essence of whatever you did to do that. So it can open doors with them. And it can sometimes be opened, uh, used to open maybe doors or whatever. Does that mean we need a soul in this thing before it'll work? Uh, that's what you're getting the idea of. Doesn't seem so we like might have to go murder hobo. Juice. <sighs> give me the dagger. All right. I will give him the dagger. So it's while you guys are kind of futzing around with this. And um, from the sound that Volo's <clears throat> made carving away at it, uh, you don't hear that like the prayers or anything have stopped. But you see there's kind of like this um, young kid, you think maybe early teens, um, that's kind of like crept up behind the group. He's just watching you guys. He's like, what are you guys doing here? Oh, we're trying to open this door. Why don't you come give me a hand real quick? And he, uh, <laughs> he's holding his spear in his hand. And he has like a, a rabbit that he's killed. Um like draped over one shoulder and he's like that's not a door it's just a wall there's a hidden door here yeah if you come over here and look real close mm. just put your neck up against this wall it'll really help us out <laughs> so, yeah, i don't know I, have you talked to anyone here yeah i don't are you guys supposed to be here uh, yeah, we absolutely are supposed to be here as I cast command on him. <laughs> All right. Uh, that's a saving through, right? 15 save. I cast it at level one. He passes. Natural 16. I would like to burn luck. <laughs> <You cannot. laughs> unfortunately <sighs> i have been trying to think of a way to incorporate that in D D though yeah well i just i want you all to know that my intention was to render this kid unconscious and then go hide him somewhere because i will kill an innocent but god i'm not gonna kill an innocent kid mm. when you slimy greasy fox <laughs> i'm not that bad yeah Perhaps these people have a criminal they would like to sentence to death. Yeah. And, perhaps. Uh, perhaps. So you uh, you're you're aware that the spell fails. Yeah. When it's cast on you. And so he kind of backs up a little bit. He's like, "What are you trying to do? You're not supposed to be here." So Get out of here, kid. This ain't got nothing to do with you. And he uh, runs off towards where they're all praying. Um, well, I hope you're all ready for a fight. It might not nope. be. <laughs> this Bolo is spits on his hands and grabs his sword. <laughs> we weren't supposed to see. Not ready for a fight at all, but <laughs> we might have to. We so, might just uh, kill this whole village after all. He runs off and uh, you hear him start kind of calling out, there's people here! And the prayers and chanting continues. It doesn't seem to be interrupted. And he starts yelling out again. And uh, you hear this elderly voice kind of ring out and like, damn it, boy, what are you doing? <laughs> Seems very frustrated. Like, That's no, not I'm to interrupt. For. And uh, they kind of break out into this banter between this very elderly voice and this kid. So they're yelling back and forth. 
Uh, do we take this opportunity to just get out of sight? Yeah, let's scatter or at least move out of the way. All right. Are you guys going to hide somewhere or what are you doing? Yeah, where do we go? Is, no. is there a building that seems to be not lived in or? I don't know. No, Here's... all the all the ones that have openings seem to be lived in. This is the only uh, one that we're, saw. We're that. really bad at hiding. Maybe I should just go yeah. talk to them. Yeah, we, we can do that too. All right, I'll just walk out there, Joe. Okay. So you walk out and you Are see. Are any of you backing me up? You should back oh, me up. Oh, absolutely. Yeah, I will. I have tongues fight, on too. I'll definitely fight. So I, I can talk to anybody. <laughs> I will. I'll go out and back you up as well. Okay. So you walk around and uh, you go past one of the buildings and there's this big kind of clearing again where all the people are knelt towards the sun. Uh, I and, do want to give the evil dagger to Conrad okay. and be like, uh, keep this out of sight. And when shit hits the fan, just stab as many people as you can with it that aren't us. <laughs> <laughs> that is a very important as distinction. As soon as you said stab as many people, Bolo's like... <laughs> oh, okay, <laughs> okay. Yes, all right. <laughs> yep. That aren't us. <laughs> perfect, perfect. We're good all there. Right. Conrad has the dagger. Uh, but so you come around and you see there's this kid and he's like tugging on the, the robes of one of these super elderly gentlemen that's kind of running the prayer and he's trying to like convince him and talk to him and say that there's people here, but they do not seem to want to stop the, the prayer. Uh, uh, I'll just call out. Hey there, party people. And uh, there are people here. Do we need to wait? <laughs> so as you yell this out, all of the people that are not wearing the more fancy looking robes that are at the front, um, they're all kind of still stay kneeling down. Uh, some of them with their heads down, but a lot of the younger ones and kids in the audit are in the, in the prayer kind of like poke their heads up and turn around behind and look. And, um, as you yell this out, the elder person that the kid was talking to kind of looks in your general direction. And uh, as he turns to you, you see his face is just completely sunburnt and his skin's peeling and his eyes are all swollen up and glazed over. He should well, really they, invest they take in, praise in the sun. Yeah, they take praise in the sun a little too serious. And uh, he kind of looks in your Praise the sun. general direction. He's like, who's that? I don't recognize your voice. Oh, you're blind as shit, aren't you? I've been gifted the true sight of the round flame. Mm-hmm. Uh, cool. My name is uh, Frank. <laughs> My name is Inigo Montoya. I don't know anyone <laughs> by the name Montoya. of Frank. We're not die. we're not from here. We're travels travelers from far away. Ah, I'm the doctor. Would you, would you like to partake? Uh, we were just finishing up our our nightly ritual before the round flame leaves us. Uh, yes. You know what? We'll just hang back here and join in in absorb your uh, you know holy hour. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Absorb. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Did yeah. you mean observe? <laughs> or we start kind of. I don't know. Listen, I'm just trying to sound endearing before we murder all these people. And the kids uh, like, hey, all of them, you know, hey his, now, uh, his robes. We're not going to murder people. Hey, Conrad's going to murder people. Away. Conrad's going to murder people. <laughs> right. We're going to watch Conrad murder people. He starts uh, batting the kid away. He's like, "See, there's nothing to worry about. They're friends. Here to <laughs> praise." a great round flame just as the rest of us and he spins back and stretches his arms out and drops to his knees again and goes right back into prayer I mean yeah oh, my. <laughs> praise the sun yeah, but I'm not going to look at it I'm definitely not going to do it he can't see that we're not doing it I, nope. I know I'm, I'm just he, he just tried to rat on us and go <clears throat> <laughs> That's it. <laughs> there you go. So, uh, looking around, though, uh, through this commotion, a lot of people have kind of like looked back towards you. 
You notice everyone that's kind of in adulthood looks kind of like the old man where their face is all fucked up and sunburnt and their eyes don't seem to work too well. But all, everyone that's younger than that, um, they still seem kind of sunburnt, some of them, but most of them have their eyesight. And you can tell they're tracking and stuff. They're not blind. But almost every adult is blind. Hmm. That's fucking weird. See, sunscreen. The sun has <laughs> yeah. driven the mad. SPF 10,000. Mm -hmm. uh, so, uh, what hmm. should we do? For a Klondike bar? What would you uh, do? We're, we're, we're going to teach them Klondike about the bar. Lost Boys from, from Peter Pan. <laughs> about the Lost Boys. I guess I'll hmm. shout out who is your champion? <laughs> <laughs> Volo wants to pick a fight. <laughs> Who is your yeah. champion of the sun? Uh, I'll go ahead and cast guidance on Volo real quick. Yeah. So, <laughs> Who is this sun? I will fight him. You, uh, you call this out, and uh, the elder, you hear him yell back. He's like, not now. We have little time before the, the round flame leaves us. We can talk after. The round flame is a god for puny wussies and and uh, stupid people. Who is your champion who uh, will your, defend I, your burning flame? I choose to believe that Volo has all of those stutters in his words. It, he yes, speaks. yes. <laughs> He's trying very hard to be uh, domineering and disrespectful to others' faiths, but isn't quite sure how. Trying to words good. <laughs> yeah. You speak of he ones has a that... minus one charisma. <laughs> oh, oh. <laughs> like you poor, poor thing. <laughs> Such uh. vile words are only spoken of those that have the false sight. Please leave us be while we finish our our prayer, and we can resolve this matter. It's very important. Will you Bolo. resolve this matter through combat? Bolo worships <laughs> the moon. Ah. <laughs> I uh, had a thought here. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, a holy man who worships, you know, death and shit can cast death spells. You know, a holy person who worships life can cast healing spells. What do you think? You think uh, he's a pyromancer. <laughs> yeah, that's what I'm a little bit worried about. Polo does not fear fire. Listen, I am. Um, <laughs> Polo has been burned by the grease. I. <laughs> Polo has trained with the grill. I fire am fireproof. I have been to hell before. I am not worried about the fire. I'm just saying. You're worried about the rest of us squishy yeah, bits. Yeah. I, I might, I'll be uh, okay. I might try and blend <laughs> in with the crowd a little bit if that would be uh, acceptable. Since That'd be I'm pretty disguised. easy. And are you trying to like look like one of them or are you just going to yeah. go like kneel down next to them? Wait, I've been thinking about this all wrong. They're really engrossed in this worship aren't they uh yeah. everyone that seems to be an adult's pretty engrossed and most of them haven't looked up but all the younger ones seem to just be like looking back and they're how long distracted. do we got until sunset uh you guess about probably 10 minutes at this point it's i'm gonna go well. stealing oh yeah, yeah there you Ooh. go oh yeah, yeah 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 no i'm with him they're not let's go like to the closest house we can yep let ourselves <laughs> in and just see what's worth stealing I've got to go there steal. You go. Now you're thinking with your thinking brain. Yeah, like what the fuck was I even thinking before? <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, uh, Eddie and I go stealing. Okay. Oh yeah. Like um, almost skipping, I'm so giddy. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, to your delight, you notice that everyone seems to be in this ceremony. Oh, and, of course uh, they are. You, you start... can't have this much zealotry without yeah. being you know an all hands on deck kind of situation yeah this is all everybody drinks kool-aid or no one drinks kool-aid and right? uh, you mm. find all these primitive houses completely unguarded 
Yeah, full of and I all fucking the wooden go. bowls and spoons. You could yeah, I was gonna say. Unfortunately, they're probably gonna be full of primitive shit. <laughs> yeah, we might find some coins, dung holes, and you find poop no currency. Uh, you're just going through. It's just it appears to be people that are just living off the area. There's not really anything worth stealing. <laughs> Crap. Crap. <laughs> there's there's some nice pelts here and there. Kind of in a... Oh, oh, that's a good point. Uh, I find the nicest looking pelt and I use a dagger to cut a circle of it out. And then I give Conrad his new toupee. All right. <laughs> Lovely. <laughs> Made from beaver pelt. <laughs> so, uh, you carve out. It's very uh, well-made wolf pelt. And... You just kind of cut a hole in the middle of it. So now there's like a wolf head like hanging down in the front of him and just two paws and then the paws for the back hanging over. He's wearing okay. like a poncho <laughs> of a, a wolf pelt. There we go. Okay. All right. Well, so much for stealing. Yeah. These people are completely devoted to looking at something that will blind them. Tremendous. Looking looking at the complete and utter lack of stuff to steal, I almost feel wait, bad for them. Wait. <laughs> well, you got oh, an idea? Oh, I got the best idea. I want to cast. I want to kind of line up where these worshipers are, like, facing the sun, kind of get my sights on it, and I want to cast Darkness. Oh, oh, no. <laughs> oh. oh Volo is going for his sword like he's about to have the best day of his life. <laughs> oh no no! Oh oh! Jack. All right. Uh, Jack. so what? Jack. What? 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 What if we we cast it on them and just when they 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 like panicking and all kinds of other stuff, you 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 come out like shining and shimmering like light. I, I'm just I have minor illusion darkness. for that. Don't worry. I have minor illusion <laughs> for that. I, I, okay, I had that thought. Or even saying, better, Conrad. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not casting it on them. I'm casting it like 10 feet past them. To block them. the sun, yeah. yeah. I am making an artificial... Uh, what's the fucking thing that the... An eclipse. eclipse. An eclipse. eclipse, yeah. The thing the great orange one stares into. Right. Uh, so yeah, I create an, an artificial eclipse. Okay. Uh, so you walk up, and uh, what's the range on this? Sixty feet. Sixty feet. Okay. And then how wide is it? Uh, let me check. Fifteen feet in diameter. Fifteen foot radius. So thirty feet across. Okay. Um, you don't think that you'd be able to block the entirety of the sun from like all of the people kneeling down, but you would definitely be able to block it out for the elders and just kind of like the middle of the crowd. Which that's probably fine, because they can't see anyways. So they probably could only feel it on their faces. Yeah. Yeah. Well, they can, they can still see like changes in light. Yeah. Hey there, Poison Ivy. Usually, if you're even if you're like completely blind from birth, you can see brightness and darkness. Hey, poison! There's a lot of different levels of blindness. Yep. Yeah. So yeah, I make an artificial uh, <laughs> okay solar eclipse, and then I'll call out. I believe that my friend Volo asked you a question. <laughs> <laughs> Who is the champion of your weak and puny circle? There we go. I will use minor <laughs> illusion on Volo to make him like radiant. <laughs> All right, but with like a blue light, you know, a cool, a cool blue light instead okay. of a warm light. I'm so, imagining you standing there, just radiating light behind you, like the Christ Child, but like and holding out two. <laughs> but you're just holding out two spatulas and insulting them really <laughs> Your poorly. Beauty yeah. son yeah, man, babies, yeah, the spell that creates you beauty son babies. <laughs> what? Yeah, what's that, Joe? Because uh, minor illusion more makes like objects. I don't know if it will make like 
a light that they would notice. Jake, well, what do you got on your back? Sound so backpack. Image. I cast light on your backpack. There we go. Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I was gonna say like yeah. literally. I'm imagining Dan cool. is just casting minor illusion and creating like a shitty cardboard sun behind him that we're then using light <laughs> to just light up. <laughs> yeah, you could do that. It looks like a third so, grade pageant. Yeah, is what it, it looks cannot like. Create. Yeah. Light. Right. Yeah. You can't use minor illusion to like replace Damn a light it. spell or something. But yeah, you can you can spice something them up. That. With it. Yeah, we'll spice them up. <laughs> there we we'll go. Spice them up. It's gonna look yeah. like Monty Python and the Holy Grail. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Witching Hour, thanks for those bits. Thanks for those bits. Yeah, thank you for the bits. Woo! Uh, oh, just so everyone knows, in honor of Juneteenth, so happy Juneteenth, everyone. Uh, any any bits, any profit, any, any profit that we make tonight, uh, we'll be donating to Black Lives Matter. So donate donate often donate enthusiastically because it's going to a fantastic cause absolutely oh, man i used to have some text to paste in there for that now i don't know yeah well tonight we're just doing uh blank lives matter because the yeah. uh need for our local bail bond to have uh funds has gone down a little bit so yeah yep still a good cause though yep um but yeah so you're you guys are able to pull this off pretty easily though so um you cast light on his backpack. Well, the order that you're doing this is first you're creating this eclipse of darkness yep. in mm-hmm. front of them. And as soon as you cast that, the uh, the kind of elder leading it seems to like start muttering a little bit. He's like, what? It's, it's, what day is it? It shouldn't be down yet. And he seems like very confused and muttering. It's like it went out too quickly. Yep. And... Uh, then you call out, I believe Valo had a question for you. <laughs> and mm-hmm. light comes from behind. <laughs> and he spins towards it. And he's like, what is this? With the spatulas. What is this false flame? Volo is the champion of the false flame. <laughs> Who among you sun-worshipping goobers would like to challenge Volo? <laughs> I'll have I'll have uh, <laughs> while he's standing there challenging them like standing heroically you know just looking down on all of these people praying I'm gonna have uh, Disa my owl is gonna come down and just <laughs> like land on his shoulder. <laughs> we are so impressive. Vo- Volo, <laughs> Volo will not be expecting this, so he'll probably make a move like this. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> Uh, so you, you call this out and uh, <laughs> and uh, the elder is like oh, blasphemous you you dare disgrace the round flame and its glory we yeah. and it's called the sun out. you fucking nerds <laughs> <laughs> you nerds <laughs> I am Volo Volo <laughs> dares anything and he batters his sword and spatula on the ground. And he starts yelling a, a name. He says, uh, Gildebren! Gildebren! Deal with them! And uh, he calls us out. Oh. And you see one of the more like muscly adults that's been hunched over in the crowd uh, stand He's up. He's beat the shit out of us, doesn't he? <laughs> he stands and... up and it's like freaking yeah. Arnold Schwarzenegger. It's got to be a Master Roshi particularly, <laughs> particularly ripped <laughs> primitive man in a loincloth and a extremely tight leather shirt. It's almost like tearing at the seams. Stands up. Kills and eats deer raw. <laughs> and he turns around to look at you. And his face is sunburnt and his eyes are glazed over. And he just kind of looks in your general direction. He also appears to be blind. Uh, <laughs> Perhaps he's moved beyond he needing to see. Punches his fist so, and cracks all of his knuckles. He's like, "So, Volo. where is the blasphemer?" <coughs> right Volo here. Kind of rubs his forehead like, "Uh." Volo, <laughs> you remember how we won that bar fight? Of course. You want some more of that? Absolutely. <laughs> Give Volo the dagger. <laughs> and the, uh, the kid I'll yells out. Conrad. He's in front of you, Gildebrand. Uh, I'll signal Conrad. Oh, he's blind. I'll <laughs> signal Conrad. This is barely a fight. 
it's going to be so great. Uh, I signal Conrad to give him the dagger, but I, the main thing I want to do is I want to cast Rave and Feebleman on this guy. Yeah. Right. <laughs> do you have that spell check? I do. Oh, man. I do, too. Will it stack, or is it just... I don't think it's... I don't, I don't think so. Learn it. Uh, let me do this so we can save your spell slots, because you'll be a little more versatile than I will. Ah, fuck. I would like to burn luck on that. <laughs> you can't. <laughs> I know. But, uh... So, you, uh... He is blind. He's blind. Um, but as as this is kind of coming together, uh, the elder yells out. He's like, Gildebrand, I believe you've been challenged to one-on-one -on -one combat with this false light. And then he says, do you cowards accept? We challenged you, ding dong. <laughs> <laughs> Polo fears no sun worshiping man, baby. <laughs> Do it now. <laughs> yes. Soundboard. All right. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, <sighs> heals it out, and Gildebrand starts walking through the crowd and almost trips over one of the people that's also praying and <laughs> catches himself and walks out. And, uh, but he seems to be able to, like, walk towards you pretty well. And uh, mm. readies his fists and cracks his knuckles again. I believe it's time for initiative. I was going to say, I want to cast Bane on him. <laughs> Ooh. But I will wait. Do, do, do. Where is initiative? Ah, 12. All right, Darren, are you the one who's beeping? Yeah, it's. I figured out that it's roll twenty and not Zoom. I was looking yeah. in the Zoom settings and I was like, "What? What the hell?" Yeah, it's roll twenty. Background chat beep is what it was. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Yep. That's okay. exactly what it was. Okay, my initiative's in. Okay, I think we're all in. Oh, so I need to mind. Sorry, I came up with the best idea that I want to do on my turn. Oh. I want to cast deafness on this uh, guy. Uh, <laughs> 18. Oh, oh, no. oh, that's so dirty. <laughs> He'll take his probably only saving grace away from him. Uh, all right. This is going to be such a rigged fight. <laughs> it, always rigged it's always is. It's bullshit. It always <laughs> is. He's going to be blind, deaf, and enfeebled. We play to win, not... To not win. There's no honor here. Yeah. <laughs> All right. This is pure strategy. So it looks like it was Eddie, then Jake, then Dan, Chuck, then Theron. The order. Yeah. Sure. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll roll for him. Oh. Got a natural 18. So Bad he's fucker. first. Oh man, what a bastard. He's old but wily. <laughs> so this guy doesn't appear to be like really old. He's an adult. Um uh, this fellow that's standing muscular, but his face is still very sunburnt. He appears to be very uh, pious <laughs> in this religion. <laughs> and uh but yeah, so he is going to start off and just charge straight at Volo. Oh boy. <laughs> Here it comes. Just hold out the dagger. Let him run into it. <laughs> ah. Ah. <laughs> All right. I mean, I mean, that would do the trick. None of them no. will see it anyway. <laughs> Only I need you to make a uh, strength saving throw. Oh no! Oh, oh look at that. That's there not you bad. Go. Okay. He said, nice. so he runs and he shoulder checks you and is trying to knock you backwards, but you hold your ground. But he lets two punches just fly, one into your chest and one into your gut. And he deals. Uh, 
Uh, do you have any sort of damage reduction or anything? No. Okay. He deals a total of 13 <laughs> damage between the two. Damage reduction is for sun babies. <laughs> yeah. uh, I assume that the ray of the people men didn't go off. It didn't. I missed. No. Okay. I will try that on my turn, but that's not coming up for a while. He is now like right up in you. Uh, from there, it goes to Eddie. All right. I'm going to cast aid at third level. Um, which I'm going to cast that on Volo, myself, and uh, I'll cast it on Dan as well. Okay. Uh, the three of us will all get a plus 10 immediately to our hit points, um, nice. as well as that will also raise our max uh, hit points by 10 Ooh. for the next eight hours. Nice. All right. You do so. The, the, oh, um, I have to. Uh, so, Joe, I forgot this, but technically, with um, with familiars, mm -hmm. you should roll initiative for your familiar as well. Oh, okay, I usually just have it take place right after you. You just wanted to have it take place right after. Yeah, if you're doing okay. something, that's fine. Familiar, just it keeps um, it for now, I'm just having it kind of circle overhead. Okay, just like right directly above the fight. Okay, that's fire. Uh, is okay. that all you're doing in your turn, Aid? Um, yeah, that's for now. Okay. Um, I'm going to kind of close distance a little bit just so I'm within maybe five, well, not five, but maybe like 15 feet or so of, uh, of Volo just, just to keep close enough that if I needed to, I could get to him. Right. Okay. That works. Um, I'm kind of assuming everybody's just sort of circling around him. Right. That works. Uh, after... Eddie goes to Volo, Jake. All right. He's run up. Dude, he's thing. engaged um, with you, threw two punches, and tried to shoulder check you. All right. Let's see here. The and you put your plus 10 in, right, Jake? Yeah, I did. All right. I'm okay, going to, for my first attack, I'm going to go ahead and try and shove this guy. Okay. So opposing acrobatic or uh, opposing athletics i don't Ooh. wow look at that Ooh, nice yeah and he nat ones so you are <laughs> able to throw him right. around <laughs> bam <laughs> <laughs> all right then um in that case i'm gonna go for an unarmed strike i will be somewhat honorable all right <laughs> Yeah, why bother? You need. Yeah. It's not like they can see you're cheating. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Plus, but uh, uh, we, I'll, we need to murder him. Remember? Advantage because he's prone. I'll roll again, just in case. Yeah, there we go. Oh, look at that! Awesome. Yep, that hits. All right, I'm gonna take uh, an action surge, and then try to attack him twice again. Uh, but mercifully, I do have advantage on that, so roll yeah. again. There we go. Yeah, Ooh, there you nice. go. And then uh, third attack. Oh, and I'll just that. roll again just in case. All right. Okay. Uh, Never so you hit that nat 20 might come. Three yep. times then? Yep. Okay. That would be 18 damage. 18. And he's applesauce. <laughs> well, he's not on? blooded or anything, but he okay. definitely gets hit by those. Um, anything else in your turn? Mm. No. Okay. I'm just going to push him down and beat the shit out of him. <laughs> <laughs> that works. All right. Uh, from here, Dan, your turn. Uh, I was going to go ahead and, and bane him real quick. And then give uh, Volo some Bardic Inspiration. Okay. Gonna get out, get some dude dude going for him. Roll it. Uh, it's a charisma save. Oh, it was a save. Okay. Yep. Uh, what does he have to beat? 15. He now once again. Uh, so, what happens oh, if he fails? 
going forwards, any saves or attack checks he makes, he rolls a d4 and subtracts it from his check. All right. <laughs> Noted. So let's just cripple him a little further. Does he get to save out of that at the end of every round? Or no. Uh, once or is he's it just last? Hit, it lasts for a minute, so the, the okay. rest of combat, as long as I maintain concentration. Okay. And then that I will give works. Jake a bardic inspiration. I will begin the dude duding <laughs> with my hurdy gurdy. Yes. <laughs> the hurdy gurdy of doom. Yes. Signals the <clears throat> destruction of <laughs> sun worshipping hut people. What, what are we looking? What are you at? trying to press what? into the camera? Look at, that name. Look at that name right there. Did it show up? Yeah, oh, there, there it is. Yeah, hey, he drew something. Hey, I know it's cool. Bill. I think that one's really cool looking. It is. Mm -hmm. Everything Frendon's draw draws is great. I know. Looking. Pretty mm -hmm. swag. Yeah. Yep. Uh, just anyone curious, that was from the 2019 Gong Farmer's Almanac. Uh, I like to show it off and be like, hey, look at what my friend drew. I, okay. I claim I'm a huge face spider. It's fine. All right. Uh, so after <laughs> um, Dan. Uh, so he has a uh, bardic inspiration die now too. He said, "Yes." All right. Uh, from Dan, it goes to Chuck. Oh, I cast. Uh, hey, Death thanks, Lich King. Okay. Liching hour. Is Sorry, that a, not Lich King. Uh, Liching hour. Uh, save as well. I don't know why I said uh, Lich Because uh, Adventure Time. That's why you said it. Are you, uh, so are you doing the one that's like, yeah. is it deafness on just him or is it like a zone? It's of just silence? him. It is <laughs> blindness slash deafness is the name of the spell. You can blind or deafen a foe. Choose one creature that you can see within a range uh, to make a constitution save. It's a con save of 15. If it fails, the target is either blinded or deafened. My choice. I'm choosing deafened. Okay. Or the duration. Duration is one minute. At the end of each of its turns, the target can make a constitution saving throw. On success, the spell ends. All right. Uh, don't forget, Dan, did your bane what? go through? It yeah. did. So what's the uh, what's the save on this? 15. 15 con. Because of bane, he fails it. <laughs> <laughs> Worth it. <laughs> Teamwork! All right. Uh, um, speaking of which, I, I do need another beer, so okay. I'll go grab one. I'm so pleased. <laughs> With he's, that, he's deaf. Uh, are you doing anything else on your turn, Chuck? Uh, laughing. Okay. Uh, Jake, you've got the dagger now, right? Conrad gave it mm -hmm. to you. Yep. Okay. Um, then Conrad and I are just hanging back. Then. Okay. Um, Theron, your turn. I'm going to try to cast Raven Feeble Metal. Okay. And roll with advantage, I believe, because he's prone. Well, I'll obviously take the advantage one, but... 13 not does not break his AC, unfortunately. Fuck. Even when prone. Um, but with that, loops back around to his turn. He is deaf. He is blind. It's on the ground. Can't see the sun. Getting the shit beat out of him. We are so badass. <laughs> are we talking about our poor, poor old man we're fighting? Yeah, we just roll into town, and you know, I'm doing I'll the a whole bunch of spells of a, on a bunch of poor blind people. I'm doing the equivalent of a resolve test, and he failed, also because of pain. <laughs> 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 and uh, so, 
with that, you guys just kind of wail on him for one turn, and the deafness, he just seems to go into a panic as soon as he can't hear anything. And he just starts screaming and wailing and crying out for help. <laughs> Chill out, dickwad. And, uh, <laughs> Um, this guy can't even hear his own screams. <laughs> yeah, he can't, can't hear, hear himself screams. scream. So it's very incoherent what he's yelling. It doesn't. It's a, in the uh, fight against Volo, no one can hear your scream. <laughs> well, everybody can hear you scream. Well, it's, everyone it's can. Not, you can't yeah, hear your scream. The beautiful thing is, everyone else can hear him scream. <laughs> yeah. Uh, he's just yelling out gibberish, Joe. Pretty, he's pretty much just yelling gibberish. Half of it is, I can't hear. And then the. <laughs> the uh, yeah. Yeah, I'll just uh, continue then to beat him Pretty into much. unconsciousness. <laughs> just, uh, just go beat ahead and, and start get with the soul sucking, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I'll beat him into unconsciousness. Then I'll All right. I'll say so that I can hear, but nobody else can probably. Um, you fought well for your false god. There is honor in this. And then All I right. stab him and steal his soul. <laughs> Except he can't hear that because he's deaf. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you're using the the dagger. Yeah. Okay. Uh, roll to hit. Uh, I guess that would just be a. You guys had a rough go of it, like. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely, he has. I suppose uh, that would also go with advantage as well. Yeah. 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 There we go. Hey, look at that. There we okay. go. Okay. Um, uh, so you stab this dagger into him. Uh, roll me a d4. Add your strength. Did, did you remember your bardic inspiration as well? Ooh. Ah. Right, it I doesn't matter it. now, but... Yeah. Yeah, nine. Okay. Uh, he's still not bloodied. Uh, mm. so you stab this dagger into him, and, uh, nothing seems to happen... Uh, other than you stabbed him with a dagger, and he starts roaring out in pain, still panicking. Hmm. Oh, in that case, uh, uh, do, do it again, I guess. Yeah, I'll give him a couple more. Uh, <laughs> 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 <I'm> <laughs> <laughs> Be like, hmm, that didn't work. So I'll just pull out the dagger, set it down, and then try to smash his face. There we go. <laughs> okay. That scene from Horrible Bosses. He's like little jabs. Little <laughs> uh, you can't hear me. Stabbing him didn't work. Well, you stabbed him, but it didn't it, kill him. It didn't. I guess oh. it needs to kill him. We yeah. have to. Yeah. It's not just an insta kill. Death dagger. by stabbing. Yeah. Yeah. I'm just gonna. I'm just so, gonna continue beating him until he's unconscious. You uh, you hit him in the cool. face, and with your punch to his head, he is appearing to be bloodied. All right. Almost there. <laughs> <laughs> hold on, hold, just, uh, hold on. This will just take. I'll be just a minute. I'll Quit be flailing. with you, folks. Quit in flailing. A minute. Oh, he can't hear me. <laughs> yeah. Okay. He's gonna flail kind of wildly at you, and it's not even so much like trying to hurt you anymore. He's just like putting his hands up, like trying to stop. Like he's just full out panicking. Yeah. Sorry. I assume everybody continues their concentration as necessary. Yeah, yep. I cry a little bit, but all right, not, then I guess I'll just much. keep beating him. <laughs> there we okay. go. Critical I'll look hit. At that. There's a nat twenty <laughs> in there. All right. Um, uh, with that hit, or with that last one, is that uh, you said it was a critical? Yep. I was so. just trying to knock him out with this. So yeah. then the Are you just, you're trying to knock him unconscious? Yeah. Okay. I assume he's not be... unconscious yet, so I'm just going to hit him again. Uh, yeah, he's looks pretty close, but he's not. A quite. bottle of whiskey is empty. <laughs> Curtis, <gasps> it's invisible. But it's with like that hit, you know glass. it's kind of. What? With that hit, he is unconscious, though. Okay. All right. I'll... Then I'll now, take the dagger and I'll poke it in him. Do you go? Shh, 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 shh. <laughs> shh, just let me put this in you. 
I'll say oh, you no. have fought well for your false god. There is honor in this. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you stick him. Um, I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> is there a way to lower the volume on that? Because it's very loud. yeah. I could probably. I let me see here. It's good. It's though. probably raising it up quite a bit because I've got my my output boosted. So I'll try and drop the input a little. Hmm. It's a little spicy. A little bit. How how's how's this? Oop, hold on. I'm sorry. That's, that's, that's too, quiet. Quiet. too quiet. Yeah, that's quiet. Too quiet. Too quiet. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's, That's a funny. little better. Bring it up a little more. <laughs> it's important to get this right. Sir, are you a henchman? Oh, that's perfect. That's all oh, beautiful. Perfect. Okay. Uh, there you go. <laughs> all right. Which is exactly <laughs> what we, which is pretty much what I was looking for. I was looking for a henchman. <laughs> yeah. Why are you helping these raving psychotics? Oh, that is the perfect level. <laughs> perfect level. There you go. There oh, you go. God. I've got, I've got, uh, I've got it. Two now. There we go. All right. Um, so you take this dagger and you plunge it into him. Uh, so he's unconscious when you do this. It's like a slurping sound. Uh, not quite a slurping sound. <laughs> I'm, but, I'm just going to make uh, one then. <laughs> uh, you plunge it in and you almost feel like the dagger gets pulled into him slightly as you do that. This dagger is the Capri Sun Straw of the Soul. A little bit. <laughs> yeah. And his body starts contorting and convulsing and uh, his mouth opens and he lets out this horrible shriek and uh, you see like light almost coming out from his mouth and his eyes and he's having a seizure his veins start to blacken and uh, after a few moments the dagger almost feels like it's sinking into his chest and it's all the way up to the hilt and then he stops moving and the gem glows a bright red. And hmm. <laughs> he is dead. But also, I will like, more very than cautiously he's dead. grab the dagger and pull it back out. super drained. Like, he looks like he's been dead for a long time. That's why it's important. Uh, that slurping sound to go with it. <laughs> Before the dust clears, let's go open that door. <laughs> yes. <laughs> All right. You, you are point. defeated. And uh, the crowd. Uh, let this be time. a lesson to those of you who are young. The sun is for man babies, and it does not help you against death. Goodbye. <laughs> uh, the <laughs> crowd begins screaming and running away and panicking. Uh, they're like, "You killed him!" And they just are terrified. No shit. <laughs> the sun is bad for your eyes. <laughs> you have them stumbling. Uh, Quite a few of them stumbling as they're running around. And uh, the elders turn back to where the sun should be, even though it's eclipsed, and are just cursing. Uh, but yeah, you have your soul gem dagger. You run back over to this door. Are you uh, popping it back out? Yep. All right. So you I'll hand the dagger to the bard who seems to understand how it, <laughs> it does that. Yeah, you hand it back over to him. Uh, when you're holding it, it almost feels like it's just coursing with energy. It's almost like vibrating in your hands. And man, it's uh, it's glowing slightly. There's like the sheen to this dagger that you didn't see before, and the blade, instead of being like just pitch black, is almost this crimson. Uh, even though there's not really any blood on it. Uh, it's almost like the metal is kind of getting this red hue to it. And the gem's just glowing brightly in its socket. But you slot it out and push it into the slot on the door. And as you do, the uh, all the kind of tracings and engravings in this door uh, start to glow red. And some of them squirm and squiggle a little bit. Some lights illuminate other symbols that you didn't see engraved. They're kind of floating just above the surface of the stone. And the whole thing starts sliding down into the ground slowly. Hey, did it. it was a door. Look, it was a door. Oh, they can't see. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, as it starts sliding down, the gem loses its color and starts kind of falling out. 
So you're able to like grab it back and have it back slotted into the uh, the dagger that the door is lowering all the way down at this point and stops once it's level with the ground. And you see a uh, kind of like the interior of these other buildings, except there's no floor. It's just a ladder that goes straight down into darkness. Well, Volo, you won this victory. I'll let you go first. <laughs> Uh, and I will cast. Polo does not fear evil soul sucking rooms. <laughs> I'll have my sword absolutely ready and tiptoe in. All right. I think with that, Go do that's the a thing. good place for us to take our first break. As, uh, I'm down with just that. Just opened a door to who knows where. We opened a soul and we opened a door. Yep. Yeah. We did. But, uh, so yeah, we'll take a short break, grab a snack or something, and uh, we'll be back. And we'll see what they find on the other side of this door. Don't go anywhere. Hasta la vista. Cool. <laughs> <laughs> well, right. See you in a couple minutes, everybody. Yeah. We'll see you in a few. See you guys soon. Goodbye.